Welcome back, my fellow patriots, to the Save Our Republic daily video series. We've just reviewed the preamble of the Constitution in the last few episodes. Today, I want to talk about the general structure of the federal government, which is defined by Articles 1, 2, and 3. Um, there's a separation of powers in the federal government, and there's also a similar separation of powers in each state government. Now, what I'm about to talk about is very basics. It's Civics 101. But unfortunately, less than half of the people of the country have even the basic understanding of this, uh, which, again, tells us quite a bit about our current state of education. Uh, so I apologize for those of you that, that know this about like the back of your hand, but it never hurts to have a refresher. And for those of you that don't know, don't be embarrassed. Just relish the fact that you're learning it and spread and share the message by liking it and sharing this video if you could. There are three branches of government, the legislative executive, and judicial. Article 1 of the United States Constitution creates the legislative branch. The legislative branch creates law. That's its purpose. It has other uh, provisions, but it the main point is to create the law. And uh, I talked about this in earlier videos about enumerated powers, uh, but uh, listing out what specific powers the federal government has, lawmaking authority vested in the Congress, but I want to talk about the kind of the structure. We have a House of Representatives and we have a Senate. The House of Representatives, uh, each representative has two-year terms. They're all elected at the same time and they are signed roughly by population. There's some exceptions and we can talk about that maybe in another video. But basically, every representative right now represents about 750,000 people. The Senate is composed of 100 senators, two per state each serving a six-year term. Their terms are staggered. In other words, one-third of the Senate comes up every election, and uh, the Senate is equal per state. So there's two per state. No matter how big the population, how little it is, you only have two. The Senate and the House have to agree and pass an identical piece of legislation before it can become law. Article 2 addresses the president. The president, of course, serves four-year terms. There's a term limit, unlike the Senate and the House where there's no term limits, that uh, president can only serve two terms. And if he happens to come in because someone dies and who is the vice president or resigns or whatever, or is impeached out of office, um, they can serve basically uh, another two years plus two terms. So it could be up to 10, close to 10, depending on the circumstances, but normally it's just two terms. And then the, and those presidents are elected through the electoral college. There's votes in each state. They, uh, those votes turn into electoral votes. They go to Washington, D.C. and then vote. The electoral college is composed of, each state has the same number of electors as its House of Representative members, plus its senators. And then, the U.S. Supreme Court is Article 3. Those members are uh, nominated by the president, confirmed by the Senate, and then they become a U.S. Supreme Court justice. And those are for life. What a great gig. So I have to stand for election every six years. I have a term limit based on age. So it's really an age limit that after uh, I'm 70, I can't run again. Uh, U.S. Supreme Court. You can, you can get elected or, excuse me, appointed uh, at any age and stay until you die. And that's true of all the federal judiciary. The reason that the separation of powers is important is we do not want to have all the power concentrated in one person. I'm going to use some examples of when we've had power all in one person um, and why that is bad. And I say we, I mean mankind. The pharaoh in ancient Egypt had all power. He enslaved masses of people, launched wars of aggression. If he made a mistake uh, about whatever, it could not be checked. He was the law. He was the justice. He was the army. Everything was combined there. Uh, there are more modern examples of, of dictators like uh, the um, French Assembly. Uh, during the French Revolution, not one person, but a group of people, unchecked, led to the guillotine, wars of aggression, 
terrible barbarism, destruction of inalienable rights. Stalin, mass genocide, starvation of millions. Um, Hitler, of course, the Holocaust and, and World War II and all the deaths there. Mao Zedong, I can go on and on. But to bring it, you know, you might say, well, those are extreme examples. We'll never go there. I, I want to, we're in the middle of the COVID crisis. This is February 23rd, 2021. And I don't want to get partisan or political, but there are a number of governors who've come under attack because they have used emergency powers in the pandemic. And there really hasn't been much of a check. And there's some scandals that are coming out now. And the scandals are, you know, the governor knew certain things, but they went forward with a certain policy anyway, and that led to deaths. And, and uh, th there's allegations of there being uh, the hiding from the public certain data, uh, misleading the press, etc. There's an old adage, and I don't know if those things are true. We, we don't know yet. It's very early on to know that. But there's an old adage that power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. And so even people with good meaning intentions that might be outstanding uh, people of, of moral character, eventually over time, if they have unlimited power, they do become corrupted by it. Um, it's very rare when they don't. I know that there's some uh, debate in some other of my videos about whether or not, you know, there may have been um, someone that has unfettered power that isn't a, a dictator, for example, the Pope, um, or, or some other few exceptions. But for most of mankind, we have those predilections. So it's very important to have the separation of powers, and that's why we have the three articles of division in the federal constitution. Until next time, uh, don't forget about America's Survival Guide at americasurvivalguide.com, Patriot Week at patriotweek.org, Patriot Lessons, American History and Civics podcast, available on all podcast platforms. God bless you and God bless America. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe.